And welcome back to Whiskey Politics. I'm Dave Sussman, your host and purveyor at whiskeypolitics.net. You can find us at America's Voice Network on YouTube. Please subscribe. Find us at ricochet.com. And if you are listening to us on iTunes, please don't forget to, forget to give us that five-star rating. I uh, was visiting with Bill Whittle the other night. We were at American Freedom Alliance, and we had one of those evenings where I wish we would have had a tape recorder with us because it was just epic. And it is, was and is, still is about one of those epic things that happen in pop culture, a phenomenon, a movie series, Star Wars. And what Bill thinks is the disaster that is Star Wars. It's, How are you, Bill? I'm doing great, Welcome. buddy. Welcome. Yeah, we, once, once you get me fully launched on this science fiction movie stuff, it's, it's hard to keep track. Yeah. So I've been I've been saying basically from the time I've been doing this that the pop culture is not just a battlefield, it's the battlefield. Uh, we know the way that young people are voting. If you look at how millennials would vote for president today, uh, Republicans would carry Utah, and they get every single other state, all of it. So when we talk about uh, when we talk about young people, we often say, well, we need to make our material more entertaining. You can't make it more educationally entertaining. You have to make entertainment. They won't watch anything else. So if we accept the fact that young people are not listening to us and won't listen to us, we got to speak their language. And a big part of their language is Star Wars. So here's what's interesting about Star Wars. Star Wars has essentially been killed. The hardcore fans of Star Wars are walking away from Star Wars. They boycotted the Solo movie. And here's the advantage that we have. The left has killed Star Wars. And the people who love Star Wars, which is most of that generation, Mm -hmm. almost all of them, are very, very angry about it. And so the enemy of of my enemy is my friend, right? Mm -hmm. So here's basically the deal, Dave. Um, They brought so much political correctness and left-wing ideology into The Last Jedi that it not only ruined the movie, that alone would be bad enough. We had a bunch of bad Star Wars movies. But what they did is what they always do. They didn't just say, here's our new position. They went back and rewrote history. They unraveled the history of Star Wars. They basically deconstructed it so that even the stuff that you loved for the last 30 years from the very first Star Wars movie, even that stuff is gone now. They've planted enough stuff in the storyline to retroactively sort of, you know, uh, just eliminate everything that people loved about, about um, about the original movies. So for someone, I, I grew up watching Star Wars, the original series in a the theater. The first movie I saw in America, in fact, was Star Wars at the Schubert Theater in, in uh, Century City, Los Angeles. I was a big fan of the first one. The second one I thought was really good. third one kind of lost mm-hmm. me, and I think everything since has been eh. So, so as not a big, huge fan, I did watch, after our conversation, The Last Jedi on Netflix, okay? It, it, it wouldn't have interested me. Well, how has it been killed? Well, it's been killed because the... And you're absolutely right in your assessment. So the first three movies generated this cultural change. And billions and billions of dollars in revenue with all the toys and everything. So then Lucas makes the three prequels, which were universally disliked because they were bad movies. But the last two movies aren't just bad movies. They're bad movies that undo what everybody has liked for the last 30 years about the first three movies. Which was what? Well, there's a couple things. Um, The original three films had a a trilogy of, of Luke, Skywalker, Han Solo, and Princess Leia. The new ones have a trilogy of, uh, I can hardly remember their names, Ray, um, oh, golly. It's, they were so unmemorable. Yeah, yeah. I, but basically, you've right. got, yes. Um, I know this is going to sound like it's discrediting me for the entire Star Wars argument, but frankly, I just cannot remember. Finn and, and, and the fighter pilot. But here's the thing. To give you an example of how they've discredited the past, right. the whole first three movies were about Luke Skywalker's change from being a kind of a, kind of a dopey farm boy into becoming not just a physical Jedi master, but a spiritual master. Mm -hmm. He goes from being just an absolutely naive punk on a farm to somebody who has such moral courage that he's able to throw away his weapon and find goodness in the heart of Darth Vader, which is pure evil. Mm -hmm. He's like the son of Adolf Hitler who says, no, there's something good in there to save. Right, right. So this is who Luke Skywalker is. It's what the Jedis are. It's what everybody loved about Skywalker was his, his endless optimism and his ability to see the good in things and to keep getting up and doing it. But more importantly than that, it took them three movies to take Luke from a guy who's, you know, in the, in the Millennium Falcon with the, the thing on, you know, yeah, getting stung yeah. on the cheek, you know. Right. It took him years and, and a whole movie on the planet with Yoda, to, you know, just to learn how to lift like one rock that much and everything collapses. This is good storytelling because it invests us in the character. It shows us that what he's trying to do is difficult, but it's achievable 
but you need to pay the price for it. When they come out with Ray, who's Luke Skywalker V2, right. in, in the seventh movie, um, The Force Awakens. That's the young girl. Right. In The Force okay. Awakens, what do we find about her? Okay, she's a, she's a scrappy kind of a, of a kid on a, on a desert planet. Great, just like Luke with you. She's a girl. They're saying we have a problem with her being a woman. We don't have any problem with her being a woman at all. She's a great character so far. Mm -hmm. But here's where we get into real trouble. She's trying to escape from the planet, and out in this, um, in this kind of abandoned junkyard is the Millennium Falcon. She runs in this thing, fires it up, never flown it before in her life, and then leads these TIE fighters on this kind of aerobatic sort of uh, maneuvering that Han Solo never in his wildest dreams Just could have pulled instant up. instant knowledge. Magically does it. Right. She magically has the ability to do it. And even more offensive to Star Wars fans is the fact that later on in that same movie, when we first meet her, she essentially picks up a lightsaber for the first time in her life, turns it on, and then defeats the new Sith Lord who's been practicing with his weapon since he's a child, beats, beats him to the ground. They call this a Mary Sue. A Mary Sue's a character who's invincible, has all talents at level 11 all the way through. Mm -hmm. And it's not only boring, and it's not only not interesting, and it not only doesn't make us like Rey, what it does is it do undoes the work that Luke did in terms of the three movies he spent trying to become a Jedi Knight. Oh, he just didn't have enough force. He earned it. He earned it. She didn't. She's magical. Right. Women are warriors. The force is female. Right. He here's your medicine. Take it. Right. Take your medicine. So now these people who have thought that becoming a Jedi was something that took years of practice. No, no. Apparently mm -hmm. not. No. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Han Solo. Oh, he's a rogue. He's been flying this thing forever. It's his ship. He tweaked it. He modified it. Knows every little thing. No, she comes on board the ship, knows more about it than he does because she's a female and the force is female and she can magically do all these things and the fans are saying no look we, we don't have a problem with her being a, a woman but we right. have a huge problem with this being instantaneous knowledge what happened to everything we believe in they threw away uh, uh han solo they, they, he died because he got into an argument with a goth you know he accomplished nothing he's the most iconic character that was his son person. Yeah. In, in the force awakens so they're having a okay. conversation and son runs him through with a sword han falls into right. the pit and I kept saying, well, he's going to be resurrected somehow. You can't have Han Solo, who's arguably the most um, iconic character in Western civilization. Yeah. You can't have him just fall into the abyss because he got into an argument with this prissy kind of boy. Surely, if you're going to kill Han Solo, and it's okay to kill Han Solo, right. he's going to die saving the galaxy, or he's going to die saving his friends. He's going to, no, meaningless. Princess Leia becomes this magical creature. Admiral Akbar, you know, it's a trap, the giant... Um, the giant uh, oh, yeah, amphibian yeah, yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's killed without even realizing that he's dead. He's simply blown out into the vacuum of space, nothing. These figures are people, are figures that people have lived with and loved right. for 30 years, gone. But as I said, they did more than make a bad movie, Dave. They undid the history. And this is an enormous, polit <coughs> enormous political lover for, her, for us. Here's how I would basically play it. This walk away movement is getting some traction, right? Yeah. Leaving the Democratic Party. And we had Brandon on last week. Precisely. So if I, was going to, if I was going to put this in political terms, here's how I would say it. I would say it like this. Welcome to the uh, Rebel Alliance. Congratulations from walking away from the Democratic Party. The people that have lied to you your whole life are lying to you now, and the way they lie to you is they tell big lies and they rewrite history. Now, I'm a conservative pundit. I don't expect you to take my word for it. I don't expect you to believe me when I tell you that they've rewritten the history of the Republican Party to make us into racists. They've rewritten the Democratic Party history to make them into heroes when, in fact, the entire Confederacy was the Democratic Party leaving the Union because the Republican Party was going to take away their slaves. All of this is false, but t don't take my word for this, okay? I don't expect you to believe me, and, and I understand that. Mm -hmm. But I can prove to you, in, in terms that you can understand clearly, that the left not only lies, but they will rewrite history and the way I can prove that to you is asking a very simple question. Uh, who shot first? Did Han shoot first or did Greedo shoot first? Uh, it depends upon, <laughs> did you see the original movie it as it was at, or as edited? In very much the same way of, of 1984 is the answer depends upon what the current power structure wants. It's not something that happened. It's something that's complete. You, you need to be able to think of both things, you see. Right. You need to learn this double think. What the state tells you is true. And if you thought it was something else, then obviously you're wrong because the definition of truth is what the state tells you. That's Orwell's theory. So here's the thing, folks. I know this may sound like an absolutely in indescribably trivial thing to many people, 
Not Star Wars fans. No, no, but but but, but this this is of this is of this is of save the country importance, and, I, and I, I'm not exaggerating here. When the first movie came out in 1977, the movie that you yes. and I saw and loved so much, went back to see 15 times in a theater. When we meet Han Solo, he's being hired to take Luke and, and Obi Wan to, to wherever they need to go, and we know he's a traitor and he's a rogue and all and all the rest of this stuff. And then just as he's about to leave, this green-skinned alien named Greedo puts a blaster on him, uh -huh. tells him to sit down, and says, oh, you know, I'm going to look at Solo, and you get the little translation, right? right? Basically, he says, I'm a bounty hunter, I'm going to This is in the bar. This is in the bar, yes. in the original movie. The original movie. Right. Uh, I'm going to take you to Jabba the Hutt, and Jabba the Hutt is going to kill you. That's the short right. form. And, and, and Solo just like, oh, come on, does this relaxing thing, but what he's doing is... He, Greedo can't see it, but the audience can see. He's unclipping the, the, the lock on his holster. Right. And Greedo's going on and on and on, and they're going back and forth. He's trying to buy some time. And then Greedo essentially, with the gun aimed right at Han, the whole time, he's got a gun leveled right at him. He says something to the effect of, I'm going to enjoy watching you die solo. And Han says, yeah, I'll bet you are. <laughs> Pulls the trigger underneath the table, blows a big hole in Greedo. He goes down, face down, smoking hole in him, and the audience erupts into applause. Right, because that's the kind of hero you want. You want a right. guy who's thinking on his feet. This guy, by pointing a gun at him, is essentially killing him. He's going to take him for the reward, but his life is over. Mm -hmm. So it's either Han or Greedo, right? Of course, Sean, of course Han shot first. Greedo never got a shot off. So far, so good. Fast forward to, what, 10 years, something like that, and the first of the special editions come out. They add all these mungy kind of special effects that make it worse, but here's what's interesting. In the time between 1977, when the original movie was released, and when the, and when the first re-release happened... Which is in the late 90s. Yes, in mid-90s, something like right, that. Right, right. In that interval, the left has taken over so much of the institutions of this country that they didn't say, well, now we think guns are bad, so we're going to make a new movie where guns are bad. Okay. What they did was, they went back and they rewrote history. They re-edited that scene and added a digital effect where Greedo shoots a split second before Han does. That way Han acted in self-defense. Well, first of all, these people are too stupid to realize that once Greedo put a gun on him, he's already acting in self-defense, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But they couldn't bear the thought that this character fired first in order to save his life. So they re-edited it. They basically had, you and I are Greedo and Han, right? right. And, and he shoots, and he, from here he shoots, and it hits the wall up here, you know? And then Han shoots and, and blows him down. So. That's bad enough, but what's especially appalling is you cannot find the original version where Han shoots first. If you don't have it on the original VHS, you cannot obtain it for love or money. It's gone. It's been, it's been erased from the historical record. Okay. As insignificant as it sounds, why is it so significant? Because it is, it is among the fans, it is a point of major contention and one of the reasons why they've just simply left Star Wars. You know, they've said, don't tell us what we saw. And don't put your politics into this, these new movies in order for us to believe in magical women. They did warriors. that with E.T. as well, right? In E.T., at the end of E.T., when the, um, when the government agents come in, they're holding guns, and then Steven Spielberg went back many years later and digitally changed it to flashlights. Yes. Because guns are bad. Okay, if you want to say guns are bad, make a movie about guns being bad. But right. that's not what they're doing. They're going back and rewriting the history that we saw with our own lion eyes. Right. And they're telling us, no, no, that never happened. That never happened. And when I can tell that to a Star Wars fan or a millennial, I can say, you know Han shot first, but if you had somebody who's 10 years old, you'd have no way of, or 20. Right, you'd have right. no way of convincing them. They'd think you were mad. They'd think you were lying. They'd think you were nuts. Welcome to our world. Now, Star Wars fans may not be political, but there yeah. is a movement, let's call it walk away from Star Wars, where they're actually, and you were telling me this the other night, where they're raising money, they're trying to raise, uh, what, a, a crowdfund situation to actually redo The Last Jedi? There was some talk about redoing The Last Jedi, that Disney might redo it because the re reception's been so awful. But, but put that aside just for a second. The point, the point is simply this. We can, we can show millennials who don't believe a word we said, who, who say they're Bernie Sanders socialists and all the rest of it, we can show them, we can show them an example that is near and dear to them, that this is what the left does. We can say the way they rewrote the Han shot first thing is the way they rewrote the history of the Republican and the Democratic Party. In The Last Jedi, one of the things that so incensed the fans, who consider themselves Jedi, the, the fans consider, that's their religion, I get to that in one second, but, <laughs> but you've got these ancient books yeah. that have been protected for thousands of years. Yeah. And then 
Yoda appears and lights them on fire. And they both sit there and laugh and say, the past is not important anymore. The past doesn't matter. It's time to move on. In other words, take the Constitution, light it on fire. It's something that may have been useful in the distant past, but we've got newer methods of dealing with things now. Right. And when these fancy, these Star Wars fans see these Jedi records burning, they start to cry because it's their religion. And this is the last thing I want to say about it. This is the thing that people need to understand about, about this generation. Star Wars is not just a movie and it's not just a franchise. Star Wars is a religion for a post-Christian America. Star Wars is a religion for atheists and it has every element of religion. It's got prophets, it's got the devil, it's got the devil's henchmen and demons, it's got um, life after death. You know that once you die, you appear as a force but ghost. Princess Leia was in the vacuum of space and she came back to life. Don't, 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 don't start me on that. But, but, but Yoda appears, right? And, 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 and Obi-Wan appears and, and, yeah. um, and uh, Anakin Skywalker appears. So you don't really die. There is an afterlife. There's a force around the world that is taking, that is taking control of things. It gives you ability to do magical things if you become a, an, if you become a student and you work hard at it. Right, right. right? It is a religion in every way. In every way, it, su it supplies the religious needs of everybody who've been told that the only people who believe in Christianity or Judaism or whatever, a bunch of knuckle-dragging yahoos. Mm -hmm. But now they get to have an, a religious order and they get to have a code and a dress code and they have a code of honor and they have all of these things all destroyed. So what the left has done is they've taken their Christ and crucified him because they've made Luke Skywalker from the most optimistic, noble person there is to a whiny, nasty, old bigot who doesn't give a damn about anything. Right. Right. And they throw him away too. His death is meaningless. Yeah. The rage at the left across the entire culture because of this is so enormous that if we don't take advantage of this, we are nuts. Before we get to how we take advantage of it, where does this come from? I mean, it, the Kathleen Kennedy, I understand there, she's being considered uh, to be fired from the Star Wars franchise. It's uh, too late. Th it's, there's $4 billion invested. Disney is not going to throw this thing away. They, it's too late. It's too late yeah, how? It's done. The, the fans are saying, I'm done. They took the first three movies, we waited 10 years, and we got three bad movies. But three bad movies are not the same. The early 2000 ones. Yeah, the, 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 the prequels, right? Yes. They're bad. Awful. Yeah, and, and John Jar Binks is offense, all of it. Yeah. They're bad, but they didn't undo the first three. Right. They didn't destroy the mythology of the universe. Right. right, in our generation, we still remember those first three in a vacuum. Right, that's, the, that's what people love about Star Wars, is they love the first three movies. Right. And it's not like they made a bad Star Wars movie. Seven and eight, uh, The Force Awakens and Return of the Jedi, okay. have actively destroyed everything that happened in the first three movies. With the example of Rey, for example. Mm -hmm. She instantly picks up a lightsaber, and she's a, a, a Jedi Master. In, in episode eight, she simply thinks about it, and enormous boulders fly into the air. Enormous boulders everywhere. Yeah. Just yeah. rise up into the air. Luke, on the other hand, who's supposed to be the most you know, gifted person in the Force that we've ever seen, has to work for years to get some little months, anyway, to get a little pebble to rise, right. Right? and she just magically does it. It's the instant gratification society. It's the instant gratification society. It's, look how impaired women are. You know, look at all of this stuff. In, in the last movie, you've got a guy who's a fighter pilot. Mm -hmm. and, um, and imagine, my surprise, when you see this guy going into battle, and he's a fighter pilot, and, and they take their losses, but they blow up this uh, Imperial Dreadnought. And in the end of the first movie, when they blew up a big Imperial ship, there's a line of people and they march down and they get their medal and the, and the thanks of a grateful rebellion because they took, did something that required heroism, and right. courage, skill, all of it. And they were rewarded for it. So when Luke blows up, when Luke blows up the Death Star, way to go, Luke. Right. When this guy blows up the Imperial dreadnought that's following him, he comes back and they parachute in Laura Dern with purple hair, yeah. who's an admiral somebody somehow, somewhere. Yeah, not I, even, I, not I, even I, Leia. I didn't even know who she was. No, nobody knows who she was. It wasn't even Princess Leia. It was an Admiral Ackbar. Nobody. She drops in from heaven right. and essentially says, okay, young man, enough of this toxic masculinity. You know, go back to your cabin and, and play with your toys. We women have got it all figured out. Just, and, and, and stop screwing around with, with, our, with our master strategy. No, no more heroism, no more courage, no more initiative, no more daring, no more... Is, no that, more. A, is that a writer or a producer or a director? It's I mean, all of them. Okay. It's a writer-director who is hired and given not only free reign but encouragement by the producer. 
Kathleen Kennedy shows up at a Star Wars convention. You look at a Star Wars convention, you're going to find that the, that the convention consists on a racial basis of probably 80 to 80% white or higher. And on a sexual basis, I would give it maybe 60, 70% male, 30% female, something like that. Okay. She comes to a, to a convention prior to um, The Last Jedi, and she's wearing a T-shirt that says the Force is female. Yeah. Well, the Force isn't female or male. The Force is the Force. Right. To say that the Force is female is to tell your audience, F you. You know, F all of you. Mm. All of you that have put your billions of dollars into this and, your, and, and, and it's become your life, screw all of you people, right? I've got this agenda. I'm going to have this magical woman doing things that men can never do. I'm going to have the men be shamed for taking action and heroics and, and all the rest of it. And I'm going to basically shove my personal ideology down your throat to the degree that I'm also going to destroy the entire mythos of Star Wars because the left can't bear the idea of Star Wars because Star Wars is the idea of an individual using courage to revolt against overwhelming <coughs> power. And these people love overwhelming power. What are they saying online? What have the fanboys been saying? Not just fanboys, fans. And, and, fans. And, no, no, and, and I'm, not trying to, I'm not trying to split the difference. What I'm saying is this isn't just like an arcane, thin slice of the audience, you know. This is not like a priesthood that's, that's all about splitting hairs. This is the, this is the Star Wars base. This is all. Okay. They're disgusted. They were so angry at The Last Jedi that they were saying, I'm, do I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm done. They're not getting any more of my money. Disney's not getting any more of my money. Kathleen Kennedy's not getting any more of my money. And, and the last movie failed because of that, right? There was a boycott for Solo. That's right, Solo. And, and everybody who is a Star Wars fan was talking about it. And I saw the bad reviews for Solo and the bad, and the bad revenues for Solo in The Hollywood Reporter. And, and it was another one of these cases where I almost smiled. You know, it's like The Hollywood Reporter said, well, why is Solo doing so badly? Well, it's doing so badly because probably we're releasing them too close together. We're putting out too much Star Wars too fast. Okay. Oh, really? Really? You know, if you're making good Star Wars movie, you can release one a month and you're going to make $4 billion if they're good. They'll never stop going. Idiots. It's too many of them. No. Or maybe it's this or maybe it's that. No. The last movie you made destroyed everything we believe in. We're not, we're, we're done. We're gone. We're done. And, and we are just simply finished with this. Has Hollywood owned this? Uh, do you see anybody, any mea culpa's having it? Listen, 2016 election happened. The media and the left still don't understand what happened. And That's they're right. still, is, is Hollywood similar to what we're seeing out of D.C. Uh, and the Democrats? There are people that know so much more about this entire subject than me, but there is a, a fair amount of evidence that Bob Iger, who owns Disney, who, who, who runs Disney, right. understands that Kathleen Kennedy has ruined the most lucrative franchise in the history of entertainment over the course of two movies, four really, but two egregious ones. And she did the first one? I thought it was J.J. Abrams. He was the director. He was the director. She's been the producer of the he, whole She series. produced the first one back. That's right. She, Force I, and she produced the, the, the prequels too, I think. Okay, okay. So, so the, 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 the fans, as you're talking about, and we just referred to this a few minutes ago, the fans, as you're referring to, um, they want to re... How, how do you remake a movie? Well... The, what, what, do you, it's what are they just saying? Fan, so, so there are people more and more love Star Wars than others, obviously, but yeah. I'm talking about the entire generation. It's an entire cohort that grew up with this. Uh -huh. They can't be religious, not allowed to be religious, they're not allowed to be adventurous. Unless it's global warming. Right. right. So this is, this is not just a movie. This is a whole religion that has been destroyed by the left, and they're furious. They're really, really right. angry. Right. If you have a Star Wars fan so angry that he's not going to go see a new Star Wars movie, that is an angry, angry person, and they're angry at the left, and they're angry at the left for shoving this ideology down our throat and ruining everything didn't, about our past. Didn't uh, Luke Skywalker, what's the actor's name? Uh, Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill, wasn't he upset about this Mark before Hamill, the movie came out? Mark Hamill, once he read the script, and maybe certainly in the, in the months, many months before the, the Last Jedi was released, Mark uh -huh. Hamill was doing interviews where tears are in his eyes, not streaming down his face, but he's, he's, he's welling up when he's talking about, this isn't what Luke would do. Luke wouldn't just run away. Luke wouldn't just become bitter. Luke's the ultimate optimist. And, and, and to be fair, Mark Hamill knows more about Luke Skywalker than anybody else on this planet.
Okay, writers are writers, but a good actor can take mm -hmm. what a writer outlines, and and all the all the actor does is worry about this one character. Okay. And he is Luke Skywalker. And if he says this is not what Luke would do, then it's not what Luke would do. And 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 Hamill again and again and again was b basically pleading, you know, basically like almost crying, please, please, please don't do this, please don't do this. And then all of a sudden he got a little better behaved, so somebody somebody had a word with him, right? So was Kasdan was one of the original writers. Yes. And it was his son. And Kasdan and his son wrote the, the uh, they his wrote son, Solo, I think. His son did the last one. His son did Solo. Uh, not, not the not the, um, No, not last the last Jedi. Jedi. That was the director. Okay. Okay. So, a again, I'm just trying to get my head around this. Uh, it, 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 is there a movement right now to try and take this back and try and re-own it again? There is some talk about it, but this is something we should really consider getting behind, um, and not for nefarious purposes. Uh -huh. What the left has done is they've destroyed your Bible, okay? They've destroyed your Bible, they've destroyed your religion, they've shown you that Christ was in fact a, a drug addict and a, and, a, and, a, and a pimp, right? And, and everything you believe in is wrong. Mm -hmm. And to understand the solution to this, you have to understand this idea of fandom and how it works. Everybody has theories and everybody speculates about everything and everybody writes books and comic books and draws things and all of this. But there's something called canon. Canon is something that is officially released and it, whether it's a book or an animated series or whatever, right. it becomes part of the Star Wars universe and now it's inside the circle and it's real. We can talk about it. And it's forever. Right, and it's forever. So basically what they've done is they put this poison virus inside the canon and destroyed the whole thing, all of it. Wow. All of it. Now, if it were me, if it were me, I would say something to the effect of this. Everything you believe about Star Wars is based on, on, on old, old scrolls that are true. Somewhere in this process, a group of very nefarious people have rewritten those scrolls and produced a false testimony that they've shown to you is real. But you know it's not real because it's not really those people. Those people would never behave that way and you know it. So what I would say in a weird sort of psychological way is I would say why don't we just, why don't we just go back to the end of, um, of Return of the Jedi the last of the good movies, mm -hmm. and why don't we just say that everything after that has been the result of corrupt priests and, and, and evil popes and all the rest of it, and just say none of it's the real Bible, the real Bible says this, and then go out and make fan films to make Star Wars back into what it should be. And, and as you know, as the cost, of, the, the cost of special effects has gone down to the degree, to the degree where two 10-year-old kids shooting with an iPhone can produce a lightsaber battle that looks better than the one in the 1977 movie. Right, Much better. Right, right. What is this, I mean, obviously you're coming from a political perspective with everything you do and you talk about. Um, what, what is this saying about our larger society from the standpoint that we put so much of our energy and our emotion into a movie like this? And you talk about it from a religious standpoint. Mm -hmm. Is it replacing religion, traditional religion, Judeo-Christian yes. values? Absolutely. We're hungry for this? Yes, people have a religious uh, imperative. You can say it's biological, you can say it's spiritual, but people have to have religious beliefs. I have religious beliefs, uh, and for a long time my religious beliefs were basically just a, a reverential love for the Constitution, and I believe in these things in, with a religious kind of a fervor and passion. But they're not allowed to have any religion. Yeah, so, so Christians are evil and they're racist and they're, and they're oppressors and all the rest. So they can't be right. Christians, but they gotta do something. And what Star Wars gave them was, it gave them a code. Everybody needs a code. Uh -huh. Everybody needs some, some system of beliefs that guides them and also includes them in a group with other people who share those beliefs. And for, if you were to ask a couple years ago, you would find a significant percentage of the population of the West would describe their religion as Jedi. It is technically a religion, though. You were telling me that at one time, they, right? It is certainly treated that way. Right. And right. it has all of the qualities of a religion. So here's where we are politically. Our enemies have destroyed the religion of the young people that vote for them. Right? The people like Bernie Sanders and all the rest of these progressives are the ones that have destroyed Star Wars and their fingerprints are all over the murder weapon. We had nothing to do with this. They know that Star Wars was destroyed by social justice warriors, was, des was destroyed by radical feminists, they know it was destroyed by, by people who can't stand this idea of toxic masculinity and all of it. They not only made a bad movie, they ruined their entire history and they're furious. And if we don't take advantage of this lever to say to them, yeah, you should be furious. Do they make those connections? I don't think they do, that's our job. 
Okay. Our job is to say, look, we've been telling you the left has been lying about us and rewriting our history from the beginning, but here's something you can connect to. Who shot first? Han okay. shot first. Well, show me where Han shot first. No, you can't do it anymore. It's not there. They, they erased it. It's gone. So this is about conveying this message now. It's about taking the message of, of, of conservatism and putting it into the language that they speak. They don't have any knowledge of, of American history, let alone world history, yeah. that's intentional. They were dumbed down so that they could be nice socialist cogs in the machine. And, and you can reach them by, by choosing the only example that they can connect to on a personal basis. In other words, they saw Han shoot first with their own eyes. And now left-wingers and feminists and all the rest are telling them, no, though, that never happened. Wow. Didn't happen. Listen, this is one of those subjects we can, and like we did the other night, to talk about for hours on end. Um, and I think that it has a significant, and it could have a profound impact on our discussion and on our dialogue when we are talking about culture and politics and bringing people into the fold. So thank you for, I know you've got a, 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 an event that you have to go to here. Uh, where can people find you, Bill? Uh, they can find me at BillWhittle.com, and I've been working under the radar on something in this pop culture milieu that has nothing to do with me on camera. Because if we, we need to understand that they're not coming to us under any circumstances. Yeah. They're not. You can nibble on the edges with Jordan Peterson and, and, and TPUSA and Ben Shapiro, and that's important. Right. But the vast majority of them are not coming here. we got to go to them. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you, you, we've talked about it. I'm not going to obviously mention anything until you bring it out. But it's, uh, this is... Uh, this is world-changing, folks, what uh, Bill's talking about here. So follow Bill at BillWiddle.com, and you can follow us at WhiskeyPolitics.net and uh, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, Ricochet.com. Subscribe to us at YouTube and watch for us at America's Voice Network. I'm Dave Sussman. Special thanks again to Bill Whittle for joining us, and may the force be with you.